What's up guys, it's Phil, and today I'm going to show you how to make some reclaimed barn wood frames using mostly just your table saw. I just got an order from a client. Uh, she was a recommendation from someone down in downtown Franklin. You don't need to know all that, it doesn't matter. The point is, she would like to have three custom frames made. Now the reason that she's coming to me, uh, instead of going to somebody back where she lives in Missouri, is that she has roots here in Thompson Station, Tennessee. So, I have a lot of barn wood, and she came out, checked it out, and picked a wonderful piece of cedar that is sitting right here behind me, and I'm going to use that to make some basic frames for her. Now, why basic frames? Because her father had made some awesome frames back when they lived here, like 40 years ago or something like that, and so she wants the style to match the ones that he had made. So this is a relatively easy project for me. If this is not something you've ever done before or you want to learn a pretty simple way to make your own frames, I'm going to show you how to do it. You could do this with only a table saw, but it does help if you have a chop saw and maybe even a brad nailer, um, just a couple of basic tools, but really I'm not sure what you have, whether you just have the chop saw and brad nailer and don't have a table saw, or if all you have is a table saw and you don't have a whole shop full of tools. I don't know. So I'm going to show you with just a couple of different tools and a couple of different options how to make some super easy barn wood frames. So obviously I am starting off with a piece of barn wood. Now you could use whatever wood you want for this project. I'm just happening to be using this one because it's specifically what they asked for. So the first step in this process is going to be setting my table saw fence at two inches from the inside curve of the blade. That's going to give me nice rips that are two inches wide, and my board is already exactly one inch thick. Because it's barn wood, I'm not going to take off any of the surface, because uh, I want it to be as rustic looking as possible when I'm done. You also want to make sure that you're using a ripping blade. Now I'm using a... 24 tooth I think uh, ripping blade it doesn't need to be that crazy uh, but you do need to be using a ripping blade because you're going to be going with the grain of the board and it's just the best and easiest way to cut now using an extremely soft wood like the cedar even though it is like a hundred years old I know from experience because I've already cut down half of this barn that it cuts through like butter this is really really soft stuff even though it's as old as it is so I'm just going to use a nice ripping blade, I'm going to cut my two inch uh, pieces, and that's going to be my basic stock to get started. Now if you noticed, I only cut off the two outer edges. Um, I think I will have enough wood from this piece to do that but I want that barnwood edge to wrap all the way around the frame, and I can't do that with this centerpiece because now I've got a nice clean edge, plus there's a huge fissure right here through the middle, and that's gonna be no good. Um, so I'm gonna set this piece aside and use it for another project at another time. For now, let's see if I got enough wood here. Now the pictures that I'm using are going to be printed off of old negatives, uh, but also I've seen a lot of people printing their own Instagram prints, which happen to be square, and the biggest you can get without the resolution being absolutely terrible is about 8x8 eight eight for those. So all of my frames are going to have mitered edges, which means from point to point I need roughly 12 inches, probably a little bit less, but we'll get there when we fine tune. For now, to cut my rough stock, for each frame I need four pieces that are 12 inches long. Now before moving on to the next step, I want to be very careful here 
and make sure that all of my pieces are facing the way that I want them to face. So I want this nice clean edge to be the inside. I also want to notice that I've already sanded one side of this piece to get it relatively flat. Uh, so the uglier side is what I want to be the top. So I'm going to orient all of these so that I know this is my outermost edge, this is my face edge, this is my inside edge where the picture frame is going to be, and this is my back edge where nothing's going to be. So uh, I'm going to orient them all in the same direction on my table so that I know when I'm picking them up and running through the table saw in the next step that they're all oriented the right way. The next step is going to be to go over to your table saw and set your blade so that the top edge of the blade is at a quarter inch depth cutting into the wood. You also want to set your fence so that it's a quarter inch to the outside kerf because we want that blade to be cutting on the inside of our cut this time. So go ahead and get those two measurements set up and when we pass these boards through after two passes you're going to have a nice quarter inch rabbit lap. You can also do this with a dado stack, but I really don't feel like taking the time to do it since we're cutting a quarter inch in and a quarter inch deep. It's just easier to do it this way. So the next step is going to be setting your saw blade at 45 degrees. Now you can either do what I'm doing here and use a table saw sled or you can simply set your fence about an inch and a quarter away from the inside kerf of your blade where it starts the 45 degree angle and that's going to leave roughly a quarter of an inch along the front edge where the glass is going to be on these picture frames. Really either way is good, not one is better than the other. You're going to want to cut all of your pieces to the same beveled angle and get them all set off to the side. Make sure that you keep everything oriented the right way so that every one of them gets cut on the same side and all of your pieces look the exact same when you're done. The next step is going to be using either a miter sled or a miter saw, whether you have a table saw or a compound miter saw, to cut your angles. Now, if I did my math right earlier, the eight and a half inch inside edge that I need gave me exactly 12 inches to the outside edges. So those 12 inch pieces that I cut, I don't really have to measure a lot. If I cut exactly on the corner when I cut my miter on opposing ends, leaving the long sides away from that rabbit lap that I cut out, I should have exactly an eight and a half inch rabbit lap from one piece to the next when I put the corners together. So the final step is going to be adding glue between your joints and popping a couple brad nails in. Or you can use a corner clamp if you want to, but to be honest, for these kind of super thick miters, it's really easy to just hold them together, brad nail them together with some glue in between, and let it dry. Finally, after that, you want to go ahead and sand everything down, make it look super, super nice, and we're ready to start glazing. So the first thing I'm going to do is take these things and apply a nice spray-on coat of flat polyurethane. I want them to still resemble the original barn wood that I started with, but have at least one small layer of protection. So I'm going to spray some of this uh, pre-mixed thinned polyurethane in flat finish onto the face of these things and let that dry. And then I'm going to go to my local hardware store and have them cut me some eight and a half by eight and a half pieces of glass. Well, as it turns out, nobody around me cuts glass. That's super fun. Um, so instead of going to my normal glass person, I decided to do this at my home store and they don't do it. So I now get to experiment with cutting my own glass. So here I've got a couple of things. I've got a clear sheet of glass. It's going to be enough glass for me to get three pieces and have some leftover. I also got glass cutter, which is the cutter, the oil, and the grease pen. For marking your glass and then I also got glazing points and the glazing points are what's going to hold the glass in place when we're done I already knew I needed these so no complaint there I thought I had one of these turns out I don't and I didn't want to have to do this myself but it looks like I am so here we go all right so here's what I am choosing to do using this cardboard piece that came with the glass I'm going to measure out and mark my eight and a half inch line 
uh, because that's how wide I want all of these pieces to be. With this line, I'll be able to score so I don't actually have to use the whole kit. So now I can take this piece and I can set it here so it lays flat against this edge. And now I know that that is my eight and a half inch line. I can go ahead and make my score. So the way that you want to do this is by laying your glass down, marking on the paper or on the glass itself where you want to cut it, and then using this little guy and some oil if the kit that you bought came with that uh, to make your score line on the glass. Now it's very important that you only make one single score line or you're going to cause too many fissures in the glass and it'll break or separate and that's not good. You want to flip the glass over and lightly tap it with the ball end and that's going to help separate the glass a little bit more. Then take it to a nice flat edge that still has a soft surface but not too much because you don't want too much give and right along that edge you want to just lightly press down until it snaps along the score line and that's how you get your first cut. Now this is obviously way too big, so I'm gonna make two cuts per piece. I'm gonna cut it down to eight and a half by 12, and then cut it down again to eight and a half by eight and a half. turned out a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Um, I was a little timid to do that. I've tried working with glass before in the past and just shattered it. So this actually worked really, really well. Uh, so if this is something you've wanted to try, feel free to go buy one of these kits, buy some of this glass. All this stuff is dirt cheap. So if you fail at it, you can always just do it again. So I've got one more piece to cut. I've already got two pieces cut. Honestly, using the little ball on the end and just giving it real light taps, uh, made it so that one of the pieces I didn't even have to actually make the cut. It separated while I was tapping it. So that worked out kind of cool. But I'm going to get these finished up and get this glass installed. All right. Now, once the glass is in place, <clears throat> um, I actually went ahead and put the photo in behind the glass and using a piece of cardboard and some glazing points, put everything in there to kind of hold it in place. And then I drilled holes using a 5 8 Forstner bit and put little eyelet hooks in there and use picture wire to hang those. Um, now obviously you can do whatever you want on your frames. Usually I would just do a sawtooth hook right in the middle across here, but the customer specifically wanted uh, picture wire, so I did their bidding. Also, uh, her father, the frames he had originally made uh, had this sort of doohickey. They weren't done as well. They were kind of just drilled out and shoved in there, but um, I did similar to what he did, you just, you know, using the Forstner bit and making it a little easier on myself. Those look super good. I'm going to get these tied on and get this one finished up, but yeah, that's pretty awesome. So I'm excited about these. Um, she is actually sending someone to come pick them up today, uh, which is why I'm in my house getting these finished up. Um, and I think they look awesome. So nice, easy frames. These are made from barn wood, but obviously you can use whatever you want to use. Uh, hang them up however you want to hang them up. I use picture wire, but sawtooths are good. Other picture hanging things, whatever you can find at Home Depot or whatever you prefer. So with that, guys, I'm going to end this one because really there's not much else to say about super simple, easy frames. I hope this video made sense. If it didn't, please be nice in your comments and let me know what I could change next time uh, for another DIY. But Keep checking out my videos, make sure to check out the quick tips, make sure to check out my updates if you want to see what it's like actually being a full-time woodworker and doing all this crap for a living. Don't recommend it. <clears throat> find me on Instagram, find me on Twitter, find me on Facebook, find me on everything. I'm out there. Everything's PMK Woodworking except Twitter. I think I'm Pod Crusher for podcasts. But anyway, definitely click on some of those Amazon links and try this out. This is a super fun way to make some really nice looking rustic frames without breaking the bank and without having to have a billion different tools. So definitely give this a try. Tag me in your videos or hit me up on Instagram if you do use this technique because I'd love to see your work and we'll see you guys next time.